Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, City Council meeting for the City of Wheat Ridge, Colorado for August the 22nd, 2022. Uh, if you would please stand as you are able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll of the members? Ms. Nasser Beck. Here. Ms. Dozman. Here. Mr. Ohm. Here. Ms. Holtine. Present. Ms. Hoppe. Present. Dr. Weaver. Here. Mr. Seitz. Here. Ms. Hutchinson. Present. Mr. Mayor, all eight members of the council are present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, in your packet tonight, you have uh, several minutes in the study session notes. We have the July 11, 2022 City Council meeting minutes, the July 25th, 2022 City Council meeting minutes, the July 25th, 2022 special study session notes, uh, August 1, 2022 study session notes, and August the 15th, 2022 study session notes. Are there uh, any... Uh, changes or corrections to be noted in the minutes. Otherwise, we will let them stand as the clerk has prepared them. And that's- Mr. Mayor, on yes, the um, notes from the last meeting on the 15th of August- Yes, sir. In uh, elected officials matter, Mr. Ohm edited one of his comments. Otherwise, as it was published, all of those minutes as stand as they were originally distributed. Okay. And uh, would uh, Mr. Ohm, we would like to make those edit those uh, corrections to the minutes yes okay so with uh, with that correction are there any objections to uh, having the min minutes approved so ordered um, if there are no exceptions we will uh, uh, move with the agenda that as published so ordered all right we have uh, two uh, two uh, proclamations tonight so let me go to the podium I'd like to invite uh, <clears throat> Anissa Valdez and Diane Lopez to join me up at the podium. Hi, how are you? Thank you, thank you. How are you? Good to meet you. Come on over here. Stand, stand close. So, you know, we don't want to get too far away. All right. <clears throat> this is a proclamation in support of National Hispanic Heritage Month. September 15th to October 15th, 2022. Whereas Hispanic Americans have contributed greatly to our nation in all areas, including science, art, music, sports, education, and public service, and, and have bravely served their country in large numbers in times of peace, war, and in every way in our nation's history. And whereas in 1968, Congress authorized President Lyndon Baines Johnson to proclaim National Hispanic American Heritage Week, and this observance was expanded in 1988 to a month-long celebration. And whereas, during this month, Americans celebrate the traditions, ancestry, and unique experiences of those who trace their family background to Spain and Latin American countries. And whereas, 21% of Wheat Ridge residents identify as Hispanic or Latino, and whereas throughout our history, Hispanic Americans have enriched the American way of life, and we recognize the millions of Hispanic Americans whose love of family, hard work, and community have helped unite us as a nation. And whereas accomplishments made by Hispanic Americans serve as an inspiration to all who seek freedom, opportunity, and a new beginning for themselves and their children. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, the Wheat, that I, Bud Starker, Mayor of the City of Wheat Ridge, and the Wheat Ridge City Council wishes to recognize September 15th to October 15th, 2022, as National Hispanic Heritage Month and encourage residents of Wheat Ridge to celebrate the cultural, 
professional, educational, and civic contributions of the Hispanic community. Dated this 22nd day of August, 2022. I'd like to present that to you, and would you like to say a few words? Good evening, all. My name is Diana Lopez, and we've come a long way in Wheat Ridge. As a longtime resident, I'm happy to see now that young people, new people, are moving into Wheat Ridge. For too long, this city was like a closed society. Most people who lived here, or a lot of people who lived here, grew up here, raised their kids here, and their grandkids are now here. Outsiders weren't looked upon too favorably, especially people of color. I moved to Wheat Ridge in the 80s from Denver to a home near a small lake and would wake up to sounds of geese and ducks. But lurking behind those beautiful sounds was an attitude of, you're not really welcome here. Back then, underlying tones of unacceptance were a frequent occurrence. After watching my family help us move in, the older neighbor across the street asked me in fear, just how many of you are moving in here? While trying to enroll my kids, the secretary at the neighborhood school asked me incredulously, are you sure you live in our attendance area? When we had the audacity to join the local private swim club for the summer, the families there pretty much ignored us. I even recently came across an old covenant for my neighborhood that said, only persons of the Caucasian race shall use or occupy any building or lot herein. Honestly, I couldn't have imagined years ago standing here today accepting this proclamation for National Hispanic Heritage Month and doing it as a member of the Race and Equity Task Force in Wheat Ridge. But here we are in the beginning stages of backing up that proclamation with action. And today, I'm feeling a little bit proud to say I live in Wheat Ridge, a city willing to look in the mirror to become the inclusive and welcoming city that we all deserve. Hello, I'm Anissa Valdez, and I'm a proud Latine person. Latine is a gender-inclusive word for Latina, Latino, or Hispanic. I'm involved in two different Wheat Ridge community organizations, Race and Equity Task Force and Land Acknowledgement Committee. We are here to show representation to the Latine community in Wheat Ridge. We are here and deserve to be heard and seen. By having a Heritage Month, we recognize and respect the Latine community has been the backbone of wealth of our community and country showing positive acceptance, success, and gratitude to our fellow community. We begin our celebration on September 15th through October 15th because many Latin American countries begin independence. We recognize our Latin community every day. However, during this month, we elevate the Latin community through honoring and recognizing the contributions. I would like to end tonight saying thank you to Wheat Ridge City Council, Mayor Starker, and our community. Together, we make change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go. Get some pictures here. Okay. Thank you. I would like to invite uh, Julie DeTulio to the podium for our next presentation. This is a, a proclamation um, recognizing National Suicide Prevention Week, September 4 through 10, 2022. Whereas National Suicide Prevention Week, in conjunction with National Suicide Prevention Month, is an annual week-long campaign in the United States to inform and engage health professionals and the general public about suicide prevention and warning signs of suicide. And whereas, by drawing attention to the problem of suicide in the United States, the campaign also strives to reduce the stigma surrounding this topic, as well as encourage the pursuit of mental health assistance and support people who have attempted suicide. And whereas, as part of the campaign, health organizations are encouraged to conduct depression screenings, including self-administered and online tests, and refer interested individuals 
to a national toll-free crisis telephone number, 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K, or 8255. And whereas, since 1975, National Suicide Prevention Week Awareness events are held throughout the week, corresponding to World Suicide Prevention Day, which is recognized annually on the 10th of September. And whereas, I encourage all residents to take the time to inquire as to the well-being of their family, friends, and neighbors over the next few days, and to generally convey their appreciation for their existence by any gesture they deem appropriate. A simple phone call, message, handshake, or hug can go a long way towards helping someone realize that suicide is not the answer. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bud Starker, Mayor of the City of Wheat Ridge, and the Wheat Ridge City Council, do hereby proclaim that September 4 through 10, 2022, be declared Suicide Prevention Week, and that the day of September 10th be declared World Suicide Prevention Day, dated this 22nd day of August, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Julie DiTulio, Senior Coordinator of Donor Engagement at Jefferson Center for Mental Health. On behalf of the board, staff, and clients of Jefferson Center, thank you for issuing this proclamation and recognizing September as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month in Wheat Ridge, along with Suicide Awareness Week. Throughout the month of September, mental health advocates Prevention organizations, survivors, allies, and communities unite to raise awareness and advocate to prevent suicide and save lives. As the Community Mental Health Center serving Wheat Ridge, Jefferson Center offers hope and support to people of all ages struggling with some of life's toughest challenges. We're dedicated to suicide prevention year-round and in September, we are excited to partner with other organizations to share resources and tools to elevate the conversation and to promote hope. Suicide has affected so many of us. It's the eighth leading cause of death across all ages in Colorado, and many Coloradans will struggle with suicide at some point in their lives. Often, people who consider suicide are looking to end deep pain and don't see an alternative. But we know that the vast majority of those who have thoughts of suicide will not go on to take their life. We know that for those who do make an attempt at suicide and survive, more than 90% will not go on to die by suicide. This is why education and intervention are so important. Each and every one of us are the right person to help prevent suicide. We can all learn about the warning signs and how to have difficult conversations, to listen, to connect with resources, and even to just share a friendly smile or a note of encouragement. That is why your support of Suicide Prevention Awareness Month is so important. Together, we will increase awareness and overcome the taboo of talking about suicide to keep each other safe. There are no prerequisites required to support one another and prevent suicide. I am the right person to prevent suicide, and all of you are the right person to prevent suicide. Jefferson Center truly values the support of the City of Wheat Ridge to encourage awareness and action in our community. Thank you again for recognizing Suicide Prevention Awareness Month and for supporting Jefferson Center. We could not do all of this important work without you. Thank you, Julie, and thanks so much to the uh, uh, Jefferson Center for Mental Health and bringing this forward. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Allison Scheck to the podium for a uh, special introduction. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I'm so honored to be here this evening to introduce um, our new communications and engagement manager, Amanda Harrison. She's fabulous. Some of you met her at the mayor's reception. She was kind enough to, to join us 
um, the week before she officially started. Um, but there's no one better than she to tell you a little bit about herself. So please welcome Amanda Harrison. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Honorable Council for the opportunity for me to be here tonight. As Ali said, I'm Amanda Harrison. I am coming from Detroit. I really consider myself to be a, a project manager who emphasizes innovative storytelling. So before moving to Colorado from Detroit, I served as the communications manager for the Detroit Institute of Arts, which is one of the top five encyclopedic museums in North America. Simultaneously, I served as an elected official, much like yourself, for the city of Rochester, where I lived. I served on several boards and commissions, and that opportunity really brought municipal government uh, close to my heart because of that experience. So when I had the opportunity to come to Wheat Ridge to work for this amazing city, I was so excited for the opportunity. I'm really excited to meet with all of you to hear your vision for this role and how you'd like to see the communications of the city move forward. So I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for welcoming me to Wheat Ridge. Amanda, welcome, welcome to Wheat Ridge and I wanna tell you we have we have a whole city full of wonderful stories. All of them. So there's a lot, there's a lot to tell, our, tell about our stories. So thanks for being here and doing that for us. Thank you. Okay. Our, um, Next order of business is the uh, public's right to speak, and the public may speak on any matter that is not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes under our public's right to speak. Uh, when I call your name, if you would please come to the podium and uh, introduce yourself. If you would please give us your first name and your last name and an address. And if you are joining us online, if you would like to raise your hand in the virtual format, we will bring you into the meeting after we take care of all of the speakers that are in the in council chambers. So our first speaker is Franklin Salazar. Hello, City Council. Uh, the project, this concerns a project that I've been working on north of 52nd Avenue on Swadley. It's a five acre site where we're attempting to do a PRD. We have some fundamental disagreements with our understandings with planning that I'd like to see if we can clear up. First of all, planning tells us the project, that this, the environment, the political environment is too political for our project. Our pro what we see in contrast that our project is not political, and if it is political, that our project is what should be the paradigm for what Wheat Ridge should have. We have designed, we have a, we have, we are, our, our density is moderate. We have a pocket park, which is a very, which provides a safe space for children. We, are, we, we went out of our way and we, well actually not really out of our way, it was what do we do? Um, to provide, to be sensitive to both the neighbors and the surrounding community as well as to our own. And so what we're doing is we'd like, I, I, the drawings are, are from me. There's a letter that's in it that's far too long to read. I'd like you to read that letter and I'd like to think about it and, and hopefully get back to planning. But now I have a question. Um, the first one is on character. Um, one, of the, one of the requirements for being able to promote, um, to do a development such as ours is that, it mean, that it, um, there be a change of character for a site. I'd like to understand what, it, what is meant by character. I can, I've read where it's, it talks about architectural character, but not about planning character. And the document on PRD directs, is directed towards planning. What is meant by character of planning and what character should be followed? For instance, we are being told that we should match the existing sites such as Rainbow Ridge and the uh, agricultural sites, which are old and been around a long time. If that's not, we don't see that as a change of character. We see that as the existing character. Where we, in contrast, we see Hans's, uh, Hans's subdivision and we see Haskin Station as the change of character that is occurring in the TOD site. And we are TOD. 
The TOD, according to Wheat Ridge documents, goes out one half mile, where it is said that the, that the housing with, within one half mile should be moderate. We are moderate. Our, our lots are 5,000 square feet on average. If you take our 5,000 square, our five acre lot, we come out at 4.4 units per acre, which is actually less than the R2 site south of us at Vista Ridge um, uh, Drive. So what we do is I'd like to get an answer on what is meant by character and is planning correct and telling us that character means doing what is existing or does it mean the new character which we see and, and or how does that and or how do you understand it? You wrote the code. And secondly, planning tells us that the code is that they don't have to that the code is suggestive. Is the code suggestive or do you or is it necessary that they follow the code? Because we have because I find that interesting. And um, and, and frankly, I, I kind of like the idea of, following, of being suggestive because I live on a 99 acre foot site, an R3 site, where the 100 feet I could do townhouses. And if it's only suggestive, I would like to do townhouses on my site. Um, but if it's not, but it's more than suggestive, but you actually have to follow the code, then obviously I can't do it. So is it suggestive or is it, is it, a, is it, a, is it a rule that needs to be followed? Also, so it really comes down to several things. One is so when planning talks tells us that we should match Rainbow Ridge, so, you know, that, that our lots should be deep and be the same as Rainbow Ridge. Is that accurate? Or is, is that the actual when they mean by character, change of character? And when you, or because I don't understand they mean change of character, so let me clarify. What I mean is what character should be followed? Do we follow the existing or do we follow the new? How is that, how is, should that be interpreted? Thank you. Thank you. And read, and, and read, and please look at the, all the documents, read them. We really, I, I'm serious. I, if, I think if you ever, if we, if we were referendum, it would be because people want uh, what we did to be established as Reet Ridge paradigm. Thank you, Mr. Wing. Mr. Okay, Salazar, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have no one else signed up to speak uh, here in the, uh, in the room. I'll check with our clerk to see if there's anyone online with their hand uh, raised. Okay, that will, um, that will conclude our uh, public's right to speak on tonight's uh, agenda. And I realize that I forgot to move the podium. Okay, we will go to our first uh, agenda item, that is the consent agenda item. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hultine, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce agenda item number 1A, <clears throat> resolution number 34-2022, a resolution demonstrating city council's support of an application to the Jefferson County Open Space Trails Partnership Program for the Lake, Tabor Lake Trail Design Build Project. At issue, Jefferson County Open Space manages the Trails Partnership Program, which is funded by the Jefferson County Open Space Tax and exists to fund trails projects in the county at either 25% of the project cost for local trails or 50% of the project cost for regional trails. <clears throat> this project funding application is for the design and construction of a stable, accessible, safe trail around Tabor Lake with connections to the Clear Creek Trail and 44th Avenue. The Clear Creek Trail is considered a regional trail and therefore this project likely qualifies as a regional project. Then I'd like to introduce item number 1B, the motion to approve payment to Excel Energy in the amount of $188,000 $188,253,000.92 to, under, to underground the existing overhead electric lines to allow for the construction of the Wheat Ridge Ward Station pedestrian bridge at issue. In order to construct the pedestrian bridge over the G-Line tracks, the city needs Excel Energy to underground the existing overhead electric lines in the vicinity of the proposed bridge. Excel requires a deposit for the estimated cost of undergrounding work prior to beginning the design. Since the amount is over $75,000, council needs to approve the payment. Item number 1C, resolution number 35-2022, 20, 
a resolution amending the fiscal year 2022 capital improvement program fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $7,260,000 for phase one of the improved Wadsworth project. At issue, the city executed a contract with Concrete Works of Colorado in the amount of $36.5 million on August 23, 2021 to construct phase one of the improved Wadsworth project. The anticipated completion date of this project is in the fall of 2023. The 2022 Capital Improvement Pro Program CIP budget includes $16.5 million for work to be completed in 2022. It is anticipated more work will be completed on the project than anticipated or budget for fiscal year 2022. Therefore, a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $7,260,000 is required in order to keep the project moving forward. Thank you. Uh, this is our consent agenda item. May I have a, um, a motion on uh, items 1A, 1B, and 1C? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move to approve items number 1A, 1B, and 1C. Second. second. We have a, a motion and a second by uh, Councillor Stites. Would the uh, clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Before we go forward, there was one other uh, opportunity for the public to input, and I want to uh, invite any members of the public who are here or joining us online that they may uh, provide input on the 2023 budget at this time. So if you would like to speak on the budget, you may come forward now, and I will ask the clerk if there's anyone on, online with their hand raised, and we'll bring them into the meeting. And I'm seeing none, and none in the, in the council chambers, so we will move now to... Um, Agenda item number two, Councillor Hoppy, may I please have a, have a uh, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Bill number 16-2022, an ordinance amending chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning the implementation of a residential bulk plane development standard. At issue, currently bulk plane regulations apply only to detached single unit homes in the R1C and R3 zone districts. This ordinance expands the applicability of bulk plane to all R series residential zone districts. The purpose of this change is to achieve community goals related to neighborhood compatibility and to address resident concerns related to the height and massing of new two and three story homes and additions. Thank you. Uh, this is an ordinance on second reading. It is uh, a public hearing. It is not uh, quasi judicial. I'm going to open the public hearing. And Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this? We item? do, <coughs> excuse me, Mayor. Our planning manager, Lauren Mikulak is here. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'll keep my comments pretty brief tonight because we did have a fairly in-depth conversation about bulk plane back in mid-May. Um, as you know, bulk plane creates that diagonal limit on construction. Um, back in May in the study session, we looked at a few different images showing that impact. It already applies in R3 and R1C. That's where the side setback, rear setback is five feet. Expanding bulk plane to all residential zone districts will have a diminishing impact in those zone districts with larger setbacks, as you know, um, but we still believe it's a meaningful code amendment. So this approach of applying it more consistently, we think helps with clarity and also balances neighborhood interests against private property rights. Um, the Planning Commission did review the ordinance in July and recommend approval, and if it's approved tonight, we will go ahead and update handouts and websites and make sure there's clear communication. Um, the ordinance is proposed to go into effect the normal 15 days after publishing. That's all I have for tonight, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Before we go to questions from uh, Council, I would like to uh, open the floor up to members of the public to speak on this. Uh, if you would like to speak, you may come forward to the podium now. I have no one signed up to speak, and if you are online and would like to speak, please raise your hand in the virtual format, and we will bring you into the meeting. Mr. Clerk, do I have anyone with their hand raised? No, Mr. Mayor, we do not. Okay, we will uh, move beyond our uh, public's right to speak and go to questions from Council. Are there any questions of Council from Council to staff? Mr. Ohm. I just have a comment. Um, I just want to thank staff for bringing this forward. Um, I know my constituents will be really happy about this coming forward. Thank you. Ms. Mikulak, I had one question, and I, I actually had two questions, and I found the answer to one, and that is when we go to, the, to construct the angle of the bulk plane, it's at a 45 degrees. What, what is the height at which we start to measure that angle? 
Thanks, Mayor, that's a good question. Um, we go vertically 15 feet above the property line and then the 45 degree angle. Okay, and the property lines sometimes are uh, sloping and is there a way to sort of average that slope or how does that? Yes, um, so the, we, when we originally adopted the bulk plane regulations about five years ago, the way it's articulated in the code is to measure it from the existing average grade of the lot. So we take that at the midpoint of all property lines. Okay, thank you. Yes. Are there any further questions from council before I close the public hearing and ask for a motion? I'm going to close the, close the hearing. And um, Councillor Hoppe, may I have a motion on this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve Council Bill Number 16-2022, an ordinance amending Chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning the implementation of a residential bulk plane development standard on second reading and that take effect 15 days after final publication. Second. second. We have a, a motion and a second by Councillor Ohm. Is there discussion on the motion? Uh, Councillor Hoppe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you very much for staff for bringing this back and I appreciate Council um, reviewing this that we brought this back. When we originally did this in, in 2015, when I brought bulk plane forward, there was a lot of um, smaller homes in East Wheat Ridge that were getting scraped and um, very large, like three-story homes were going in next to them. And this is really a tool to be able to balance um, the way that we can still have um, active and, um, and good, nice construction in our community and not, um, not alienate our neighbors at the same time. So thank you for staff for um, bringing this to us again. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Hop, uh, Holteen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also wanna thank staff and my peers on council for uh, getting this across, hopefully across the finish line. We haven't voted yet. Um, I know that this is something uh, that we have been hearing from uh, our constituents for, for years about. And I think this was really the right time to address it. We have uh, done a lot of work in this community through neighborhood revitalization strategy and other policy matters that we've taken up to really understand the impacts of this. And this seems consistent with, you know, how we, we understand the quality of our neighborhoods that um, we, you know, we hear from our neighbors that they want to see. And I just, you know, want to call attention, uh, you know, we've received some criticism recently that the adoption of the ADU ordinance was sort of a, blanket uh, like neighbor like citywide rezoning and like fundamentally changing the character but much like the ADU ordinance this is an action that council can take that really looks at addressing our community needs citywide and I think that this council has done a very thoughtful job of considering those and uh, I'm excited to vote yes for this tonight thank you is there any further discussion on the motion <clears throat> seeing none will the clerk please poll the council Mr. Mayor, the ordinance has passed unanimous. Thank you. We will go to agenda item number three. Councilor Ohm, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mayor. Council bill number 17-2022, an ordinance amending section 21-30 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning performance warranty and guarantee for work in public rights of way. At issue, chapter 21 of the Code of Laws entitled Streets and Sidewalks regulates all construction operation in public rights of way. The chapter was comprehensively revised in 2020. This ordinance amends the required warranty period for public improvements from three years to two years. This is sufficient for the city's needs and is consistent with the requirements of many other Denver area cities. Thank you. This is an ordinance on first reading to set the date, time, and location for a public hearing. May I have a motion on this item, Mr. Councilor Ohm? Thank you. Uh, I move to approve Council Bill number 17-2022, an ordinance amending section 21-30 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning performance warranty and guarantee for work in public rights of way on first reading, ordered and published public hearing set for Monday, September 12, 2022 at 7 p.m. as a virtual meeting and in city council chambers if allowed to meet in person on that date per COVID-19 restrictions and that it takes effect 15 days after final publication. Second. We have a motion and a second. Will the clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. We will go to agenda item number four. Uh, Councilor Weaver, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a motion to award a contract and subsequent payment payments to David Evans and Associates of Denver, Colorado in the amount not to exceed 863 
6,200. <laughs> Sorry, $64 um, for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifica specifications for 32nd and Youngfield Street bicycle, pedestrian, and aesthetic improvements. Thank you. Well, this will be a motion of the council. It is not quasi judicial. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this? We do. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to show a few graphics here. Um, I think we showed this to council several months ago, but um, this is kind of an exciting project um, that the Urban Renewal Authority, We Ridge Urban Renewal Authority, has uh, set aside $5 million from their, um, their recent bond. Um, let me close this down. I can't get that to move. Is Lauren still here? I need, sorry, I need technical help. Um, so we have $5 million from the Urban Renewal Authority bond um, set aside to make some major improvements along the Youngfield Corridor and the interchange, thank you, at uh, 32nd and um, I-70. Um, as many of you have, have driven through there, um, you, can, you can understand why um, it might need some improvements, some, mainly some aesthetic improvements. But um, we're also going to do some bike ped improvements under I-70 um, on 32nd Avenue that are um, needed. Uh, and we have 890000 we hope, um, that we're getting from Dr. Cog from their TIP program to help with, with those improvements. Um, so just real quickly, um, these are just some photos of current conditions and the project area that we're looking at. So we're looking at um, project area all the way um, from the eastbound um, Youngfield exit off of I-70 all the way up to um, Young, uh, all the way up the Youngfield corridor to 40th Avenue. That's the underpass that goes to the Clear Creek Crossing development. Um, and we're really looking at four um, major nodes that we're um, going to focus on. Again, the um, eastbound Youngfield exit, um, the 32nd and um, I-70 intersection, the eastbound on-ramp um, at the Applewood Shopping Center, and then also the 40th Avenue um, area. Those will be the four major nodes where most of the uh, attention will be um, paid for the aesthetic improvements. Um, these are just some pictures of the current condition. As you can, you can see, this is mo mostly CDOT right away, um, so the city has no control over it. We've been working with CDOT, though, and they are willing to work with us and allow us to make improvements to their right away. Um, and you can see there's just not much for landscaping. There's a lot of drainage issues, um, pretty bare, a lot of concrete. Um, and, you know, with the current development of Clear Creek Crossing and then, of course, of our Applewood Shopping Center, that's really the major business um, center for the city. It's where the majority of our sales tax comes, a lot of in private investment going into both, both areas, both shopping centers, and we really want to make this area look a little bit nicer. Again, just some more um, current conditions of what the site looks like, um, some uh, chain link fencing that gets blown over, um, trash gets caught in the fencing when it's windy. Um, so just needs um, quite, a, quite a bit of improvement. So we're excited that we have some money available through the URA bond um, to help with those improvements. And these um, are some conceptual drawings um, that uh, David Evans and Associates um, did for the city several months ago. Um, David, David Evans and Associates also um, did a conceptual project for the I-70 and Kipling interchange. Um, if that project ever moves forward with CDOT, um, we have some enhancement that, enhancements that we would like to also make at that interchange similar to this. Um, but just some landscaping at some of these major nodes that I mentioned, some signage, um, uh, trees, um, this is just some different views of, of monument signage and, and vertical trees, vertical signage um, along the corridor to make it look much, much nicer. Um, some fencing um, down the, the right of way with maybe some different um, panels to add some vertical um, um, aesthetic uh, pleasing views uh, along that corridor, different types of fencing. Um, again, here's just some um, examples of different landscaping that can happen at some of these different nodes all the way down the corridor, all the way up to um, 40th Avenue. And I think that's it. Okay. Um, so tonight in front of you is the contract um, with DEA, David Evans and Associates, to um, take these conceptual plans to final construction drawings so that um, we can start this work. It's kind of time sensitive. Um, the bonds that the Urban Renewal Authority issued have to be sent in a, spent in a three-year time frame. 
and um, those bonds were issued. Let's see, what month is it today? What month are we in? September? August, August the 22nd. August. When were those issued? I can't remember, February or last November, I think. So losing track of time. But we've already um, been several months down the road since those bonds have been issued. And we're also working around the schedule of CDOT schedule of, of replacing the, the bridge over 32nd Avenue. So we're not going to be able to do a lot of the work until they're out of there. And we don't think their project's going to be done for probably another year or so. Um, we're hoping we can work in some of the corridor away from 32nd Avenue um, so we can get this project done sooner than later. So with that, we'll take any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Before we go to any questions from council, uh, I'd like to open this up to the public for, uh, uh, to speak on. I have no one signed up to speak, but if you're in the uh, council chambers and would like to speak on this, you may come forward now. Uh, if you are uh, joining us online, you may raise your hand, and I'll ask our clerk if anyone has raised their hand who would like to speak on this. No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we don't have anyone here to speak, so I will go now to questions from Council of Staff. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Holteen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Patrick, you had a couple slides in there that showed a little bit about um, that intersection at 40th and Youngfield. Um, I just want to check. It's, it's a weird intersection. First of all, pedestrian access through there is a little jerry wonky currently. Um, can somebody speak to just sort of how uh, pedestrian access in that intersection is going to be managed and then how, uh, you know, really multimodal bike and ped is going to be yeah. managed going under I-70 there because, I mean, there are so few opportunities uh, to cross I-70. Um, so I'm just really curious how that's being treated both in terms of built environment, signage, paint. Yeah, it's a great question. Hopefully, I don't know if Mr. Westberg or Mr. Wynn can uh, help address some of that. As far as uh, pedestrian accessibility, I believe there is a wider path we built on the south side of that underpass that allows um, pedestrian. And as for the um, bike lane, I, you know, there isn't much room right now, but certainly there's an alternative crossing underneath the bridge just a couple blocks north of there via Clare Creek that isn't that far apart. That is safer, more um, inviting uh, in terms of crossing underneath I-70. Great, thank you. I think, um, you know, it's it's not very bike friendly on Youngfield, especially between 44th and 48th. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, you don't really have to do a lot around the built environment, but, um, you know, really taking a look at lighting under that bridge and making yep. sure that's safe and yep. um, using just some signage to indicate bikes, because I can tell you right now, I, I would probably use that bike, that bridge um, it, it's more accessible for me to get from my house to to Clear Creek Crossing, and people will always use use what's closest to them. They rarely, and, and it's actually not that convenient to go over to the Clear Creek and um, get get on the trail. Like I know I know it's only a couple bike blocks, but anyway, just if you could make sure that just the the lighting and the signage is is really making sure that that's a safe place for. And yeah, those are good points. We'll make sure that that's looked at um, during the design process. And, um, you know, that 40th uh, underpass is, is going to be the main entrance into the hospital for emergency vehicles, too. So we want to make sure we're taking that into account. Um, but um, it's good, good points. We'll make sure we're looking at that. Great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Ohm. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is it staff's opinion that uh, selecting another consultant would be comparable to price to DA, DA? Based on, I know we've had other consultants. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Ohm, I, I didn't yeah. hear the first part of that. Um, so I'll just repeat it. Is it staff's opinion that um, that selecting another consultant uh, would be comparable to in price to DIA because we're just doing a sole sourcing instead of doing a competitive bid? Yeah, good question, Mr. Ohm. We, we did sole source this project um, just because of the fact that um, David Evans and Associates um, has been working with the city for several years now on conceptual designs for our major um, intersections off of the I-70. Um, so we, we believe creating or going through another F, F, RFQ process to hire somebody would take too much time with the time constraints we have on the pricing. I know this group um, probably did most of the negotiation on the pricing. Um, I think it was higher when it came in. Um, I don't know if I have an opinion on how this would compare to other um, consultants, but Steve, do you have any? We, when we look at their rates, you know, certainly we do have a database of, you know, market rate uh, of other similar uh, in, in type of work. 
that they do. Um, certainly that um, sole sourcing, um, there is a little bit of side in red, but we're working with our uh, purchasing agent to make sure that those rates are compatible with the market. Thank you. And then my other question is, is um, will there be some type of discussion uh, as far as like the bike lane possibly going underneath uh, 32nd and like Youngfield there? Yeah, that, that is part of the project. I'm sorry, I probably wasn't very clear, but um, the project's really um, in two phases. One is the more aesthetics, the landscaping and fencing, and um, the second project is the bike and pedestrian um, improvements under I-70 okay. um, on 32nd. The reason I ask is I, I, I'm underneath that bridge at least three times a week, and uh, it's uh, sometimes, you know, you, you try to you try to be a good cyclist, and you, you know you're going straight, so I'm in between the cars, which is fine, but if I was to be pushed over to the far, uh, say, right side going uh, eastbound, sometimes that tells the car that, well, maybe he's taking a, a right turn, and then that car in that right turn lane starts taking a right turn, and then we have a, an issue. Um, and so I just, I just hope that staff is, will take that under consideration. Yeah, and I think we have had some initial designs. Maybe Mark could speak to we've, that briefly. We've, we've done some conceptual designs just to make sure everything's going to fit under there. Right. Um, and those were what informed our cost estimates and stuff that we applied with for the TIP grant for. Um, and DEA is really recognized as a, as a leader in transportation design, including for non-cars. Um, so we're going we're gonna to use all those things to... Um, you know, use their experience and use our experience with folks that ride under there. We've got a couple of cyclists on our staff that ride through there often also. Um, so we'll be doing some public outreach and some other things as we go through the design to make sure that we're, we're getting that right. I think a big, a big benefit for the cyclists is we'll, we'll have bicycle detection added to all of those signals so that if they park in the bike box that we'll have painted on the ground, then they'll be picked up by that bicycle detection. They won't um, hopefully be as is eager to, to run the red lights because they know they're gonna get their turn just like the cars do. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it and uh, really takes that confidence level way up there having some cyclists on your stat team, so thank you. Are there any further questions? Oh, oh uh, actually, my, mine's a comment, I'll wait. Um, okay, uh, let's see, we're ready for a motion, Mr. That's me. Weaver. <laughs> I move to award a contract and subsequent payments to David Evans and Associates of Denver, Colorado in an amount not to exceed $863,264 for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifications for 32nd and Young Field Street bicycle pedestrian aesthetic improvements second okay. second we have a motion and a second by uh, councillor Stites. is there discussion on the motion councillor weaver i would just like to support uh what my fellow councillors have been saying regarding the bike uh and and pet interaction i just think we have a really important opportunity to connect clear creek crossing with the, the other side of Wheat Ridge, and as we all know, historically, an interstate just creates this big crater between a city. Um, so, so I think it's really worthwhile, um, not just for, for bicyclists, but also uh, pedestrians and just having a welcoming corridor between the two. So thanks. Thank you, Councilor uh, Stites. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with what Ms. Weaver just said, but uh, I also want to thank the staff and, and uh, um, for putting some energy and some uh, um, money into this corridor as somebody who has a business on that corridor. And we hear uh, constantly from District 3 that uh, that's a fairly dangerous and somewhat unsafe uh, um, 32nd in Youngfield. It can be a pretty scary place to go sometimes. So um, we definitely appreciate you guys doing that and beautifying that corridor because that's going to be where a good chunk of uh, business is done in the city at uh, Clifford Crossing and at the uh, Youngfield uh, Shopping Center. So thank you. Thank you. Um, additional uh, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, we will now move to agenda item number five, a Councilwoman Dozeman. Would you please introduce this item? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
The motion to approve an amendment to a contract with Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated, Denver, Colorado, and subsequent payments for an additional amount not to exceed $120,823.08 for a total of $713,682.02 for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifications for Wheat Ridge Ward Station pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements. At issue, Short Elliott, Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated was contracted to perform design services for the pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements at the Wheat Ridge Ward Station area in 2019 that were then suspended in 2020 to divert funding to the Clear Creek Crossing Access Ramp Project. An amendment was executed in early 2022 to restart the project using renewal Wheat Ridge bond funding. The Jeffco Sub-Regional Forum approved funding for this project in early August, and the Dr. Cog Board is expected to award the funding in late September. Because this additional funding is from the federal government, an amendment to task order number five of the contract with SCH needs to be approved for the additional tasks related to completing this project following the federal process. Thank you. This will be a motion of the council. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this item? Yeah, the issue statement was um, pretty specific, but um, Mr. Wynn and Mr. Westberg are here to answer any questions, or do you have anything you want to add to it? Okay, before we go to questions from council, I will uh, open this up to the members of the public to speak on this agenda item number five. I have no one signed up to speak, but if you're here in council chambers and would like to speak, you may do so now. And I'll ask our clerk if anyone online has raised their hand and would like to speak on this item. No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. And I don't see anyone here, so we'll move past that and go to questions from council. Are there questions from council of staff on this item? Seeing none, uh, uh, Councillor Dozman, may I have a motion on this item? I move to approve an amendment to a contract with Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated, Denver, Colorado, and subsequent payments for an additional amount not to exceed $120,823.08 for a total of $713,682.02 for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifications for the Wheat Ridge Ward Station, pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements. Second. 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 We have a, a motion and a second by uh, Councillor Hoppe. Is there a discussion on the motion? Uh, Councillor Holteen. Thank you. I'll just be quick. Uh, having followed this process pretty closely, um, we were just doing a phenomenal job of getting uh, transportation investments in our community. We come forward with good proposals and we've got matching funds to make it happen. And uh, the fact that these are federalized dollars, uh, you know, yeah, kudos, good job. Um, we, I, it's just amazing. Like Wheat Ridge is just a one, one small community in Jefferson County. And I think we're getting something like half, more than half of the, yeah, of, of the available funding for the whole county right now. So um, that, that's because we've got an amazing staff and I just really wanna recognize you for that because those investments benefit all of us and uh, you guys work really hard and you're not lacking for things to do. So thank you so much for your hard work to make sure we get good investments in our community and we're like, we're winning. We're, we were just winning. We're the, we're the winningest county as far, or city as far as I know. Thanks. Any additional discussion on the motion? Uh, Councilor Rome. Yes, I just want to thank staff for the vision of having this pedestrian bridge. That's really going to, I think, help connect everybody. It's really important to the city. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, who's the second on that? I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, Councilor Hoppy was Hoppy, the thank. second on that one, yes. Um, with that, we'll go to agenda item number six. Councillor Nossler Beck, would you please introduce this item? Thanks, Mayor. Motion to approve an amendment to a contract with HDR Inc. Denver, Colorado, and subsequent payments for an additional amount not to exceed $58,311.84 for a total of $175,022.15 for property acquisition services for Wheat Ridge Ward Station, pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements. I, I thought I just read the one that we read before. That's why I stopped <laughs> there for a second. It felt a little deja vu -y. Um At issue, HDR was contracted to perform property acquisition services for the pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements at the Wheat. The Wheat Ridge Ward Station area in 2019 that were then suspended in 2020 to divert funding to the Clear Creek Crossing Access Ramp Project. An amendment was executed in early 2022 
to start the project using Renewal Wheat Ridge bond funding. The Jeffco Sub-Regional Forum approved funding for this project in early August, and the Dr. Cog Board is expected to award the funding in late September. Because this additional funding is from the federal government, an amendment to task order number two of the contract with HDR needs to be approved for the additional tasks related to completing this project following the federal process. Thank you. This will be a motion of the council. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this item? Um, same on this one, too. Um, I think it's pretty clear, but I'll just add to what um, Council Member Holteen mentioned in the previous item. This is, this is the exact same thing. It's just an amendment um, because the money will be federalized. You know, it, there is a little bit more work um, be, because, it, <laughs> because it is federalized. Um, the, the cost will go up a little bit, but the amount of additional grant funding that we're mm -hmm. receiving is, is, you know, I don't know the exact 10 times as much. Um, and if you remember, we divert it um, or we commit it um, urban Renewal Authority uh, bond funding for these projects, um, and that's this is just going to free up that much more that the, the Urban Renewal Authority can use on critical infrastructure projects um, in the city, and those haven't been allocated yet, so um, that's um, exciting to know that we have um, all this additional money for for some more projects that are, are needed in the city. So with that, staff, do you have anything to add to this one? The, the only other thing I would add is that there's a third project we submitted for also that's for the sidewalk on Wadsworth on the west side between 32nd and 35th, including redoing the intersection at 32nd to make it much more bike pitch friendly. So in, in total, we're getting about $18 million in projects with $15 million in federal funds. And CDOT's chipping in at 700000 more dollars for the 32nd intersection project. So we're, we're doing pretty well so far. And we got two more rounds to go of TIP funding. Okay, thank you. Before I go to questions from council, I'd like to uh, uh, open this up to uh, uh, the public to speak on this item number six. If I don't have anyone signed up to speak, but if you are here in council chambers and would like to speak, you may do so now. Uh, if you are online, if you'd like to raise your hand, we'll bring you into the meeting and give you the opportunity to speak on this. And I'll check with our clerk to see if anyone has raised their hand tonight. No, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm looking for a hand tonight somewhere. so. Anyway, uh, we will uh, close our public's right to speak and open this up for any questions of council. And seeing none, uh, we will uh, ask M Councilor Nossler Beck to give us a motion on this item. I move to approve an amendment to a contract with HDR Inc. Denver, Colorado and subsequent payments for an additional amount not to exceed $58,311.84 for a total of $175,000. $22.15 for property acquisition services for the Wheat Ridge Ward Station pedestrian bridge, plazas, and trail improvements. Second. second. Who, who do we think had the second? Uh, Councillor Dozeman had the second. Is there a discussion on the motion? Councillor Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, while not exactly germane to this um, item, I'm very happy to hear about the sidewalk on from 32nd to 35th on Wadsworth. So thank you for working on that. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, we will go to agenda item number seven. Councillor Hutchinson, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 36-2022, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2022 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $20,000 for the purpose of providing a contribution to the Wheat Ridge Community Coalition for Education. At issue, per city council's direction, the city will contribute funds to support nonprofit organizations whose demand for services has increased due to the COVID-19 pandemic using increased general fund reserves from the American Rescue Plan Act funding. This supplemental budget appropriation will provide $20,000 in funding to the Community Coalition for Education to support students and families impacted by the pandemic. Thank you. This will be a resolution uh, of the council. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this item? Uh, not much to add unless uh, um, there's a couple council members who have been working on this if they want to make some comments. But 
um, as Ms. Hutchinson read, this is um, ARPA dollars, um, and it's going towards the category of outreach to families and individuals to help um, those who were most impacted by the pandemic. Um, and um, Council Member Nasrbeck, you want to speak to this? Thanks. Um, I uh, just, I, I think I've, I've spoken to a lot of you about this, um, or Councilor Stites may have also talked to you about it, but um, uh, when we were talking about potentially um, using some of the marketing dollars for schools, um, we got involved with a group um, of community organizations, service organizations, and um, the school area family liaisons for each of the schools in Wheat Ridge. And when we were invited into that meeting, um, we learned about some of the needs that the schools have, particularly after um, COVID, uh, they're, they're usually referred to as kindness closets um, in, the, in the schools, but each school has their own, um, their own <laughs> version of what a closet is based on what kind of um, resources they have. So in some spaces, it's a classroom. In some spaces, it's a closet. Sometimes it's a clipboard. Um, each family liaison from each one of the schools um, will be receiving some of these funds to um, do what is best for their school. So this coalition, um, the, uh, the coalition that's referenced in this um, also is going to be um, helping bring more resources to all of the schools. And um, we will also Councillor Stites and I are really involved with them, also be utilizing this as an opportunity to help um, do some of that marketing that we initially talked about as well. So. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything well, else, Councillor Stites? I think you summed it up pretty well. I think one of the biggest things is um, <clears throat> it used to be that uh, all of the resources were held at Stevens at the, at the hub, and, and what they've found is that they need to decentralize that and get it out to all the schools to uh, help those families a little bit better. So. Um, a lot of this will go to making sure that they have that, but a lot of it too will go into making sure that those organizations that support them are able to get those resources and what they need rather than just what the organizations think they need um, because a lot of those, uh, there seems to be a bit of a disconnect, but um, it's, it's really important right now, especially as, as schools seem like they're on the chopping block with Jeffco, that uh, we have these schools working together and uh, we support it as a community, so thank you. Thank you. Before we go to questions of, uh, of uh, council, I would like to uh, enter, uh, open this up to the public to speak on this item. I don't have anybody signed up to speak, but if you're here in council chambers and would like to speak on agenda item number seven, you may do so now. Uh, if you're online, you may raise your hand. We'll bring you into the meeting, and I'll ask our clerk if anyone has raised their hand on this item. No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we don't uh, have any speakers here, so we will uh, go and open this up to questions from council. Are there any questions of council from staff on this item? Okay, seeing none, uh, Ms. Hutchinson, may I have a motion on this item? I move to approve resolution number 36-2022, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2022 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $20,000 for the purpose of providing a contribution to the Wheat Ridge Community Coalition for Education. Second. We have a motion and a second by Councillor Nossler Beck. Is there discussion on the motion? Councillor Nossler Beck. Um, I just wanted to um, point out and, and thank um, Councillor Hoppy for um, just being an eagle eye and finding ways to, to figure out how to make dollars go <laughs> to the places where they're needed in this community. And um, just another example of how she's been just an incredible resource to me on council and a mentor. And I am just very appreciative of that. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tim Holteen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm really excited about these dollars and some of my more limited work in community schools, uh, principally actually being on grant review committees for grants that were going to local schools. The importance of having the resources at the school makes all the difference in the world. The people who really need access to what these uh, funds are gonna be providing, you know, don't have the additional resources to be going to another school to be getting this. Um, 
And, and the thing I also learned is that when programs like this are actually funded within the school, the school actually um, really leverages it and brings even more to the table. So I'm just really excited that the work you guys have done on this is actually bringing it to, to where community members can actually access it, but then also where it can be um, leveraged by, you know, just the great things that happen within our community schools. So I'm really excited to be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stites. I also want to thank Councilwoman Hoppy for, for uh, finding that, and I also want to thank Councilman Nosler Beck for uh, going to the staff and, and, and getting that taken care of. So um, it's been a big team effort, and uh, um, this is really important. This is one of those things that, uh, as uh, Ms. Hultine and I were working on the NRS and trying to work on strengthening our neighborhoods, having neighborhood schools that take care of the community is, is a big part of that. So um, definitely support this. Thank you. Terrific. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please poll the council? The motion passes unanimously, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We will now go to agenda item number eight. Uh, Councilor Stites, may, uh, will you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 37-2022, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2022 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $11,159 for the purpose of accepting the 2022-23 Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant. At issue, the police department received an Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant, JAG, award for the $11,159 for the Department of Justice from the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs. The police department plans to use the grant to cover overtime costs associated with targeted efforts to reduce crime within the I-70 and Kipling corridor and provide resources for those experiencing homelessness in the area. Grant requirements include advising city council of the award as well as seeking input from community members on the proposed use of the grant funds. Thank you very much. This will be a resolution of the council. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation? We do. Uh, our chief uh, snuck up on me. Mr. Murtha is back here. He'll give. Okay, Chief Murtha. Uh, thank you. Uh, the uh, the grant will really be what I think uh, Mr. Goff said earlier. It will be federal funds that um, free up other funds for us to go and, and uh, do some work in different communities. We spend an inordinate amount of time and effort on the I-70 in Kipling area trying to do uh, educational work as well as enforcement work, and this allows us to go to other areas of the city on a more frequent basis. It's not that we ignore those other areas, but we'll be there more frequently. We have several other grants in the pipeline. Uh, we've received favorable feedback on those, so we're really trying to take advantage of the federal uh, stream of cash right now. Thank you. Uh, before we go to questions from council, I'd like to in, uh, invite the public to speak on this agenda item number eight. If you're here and would like to speak, uh, you may come to the podium. I don't have anyone signed up, and once again, if you are online and would like to speak on this, please raise your hand and I'll ask our clerk if anyone has raised their hand and would like to speak. No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. We'll close the uh, public's opportunity to speak on this and go to questions from council. Okay, there are no questions. So, Mr. Stites, may I have a motion on this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve resolution number 37-2022, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2022 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $11,159 for the purpose of accepting the 2022-23 Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant. Second. We have a motion and a second by Ms. Hutchinson. Is there discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please poll the council? Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That, complete, that completes our agenda items on this, um, on tonight's uh, docket. Um, Mr. Goff, I think we are at City Managers Matters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just got a couple quick things. Um, as a reminder, we're off the next two weeks, so enjoy those. Um, we have fifth, fifth Monday coming up and then Labor Day holidays, so um, don't show up here on Monday night in the next two weeks. Uh, we'll be back on September 12th. Um, we are uh, PD, glad the Chiefs here. We're having hops with cops. Got my koozie. So uh, if you want to go have a conversation with the Chief or any of our officers, some of our officers are going to be at Clancy's this Thursday, August 25th, 5 to 7, 
our police officers will not be drinking, but you can have a beer with them. Um, Caesar Square um, is having their grand reopening. You remember that project in Wheat Ridge? Um, the city contributed um, um, two years of our private activity bond allocation. So um, they're having a grand reopening on August 30th. It's um, a great project that is preserving affordability in the city. Um, Ms. Dozeman has agreed to go speak on behalf of the city, so thank you for that. Um, again, but anybody's invited to that August 30th at 1 p.m. Um, the Recreation Center is closed this week for our annual cleaning and maintenance, um, but our outdoor pool is still open, at least through the weekends, um, or on weekends through September 11th. So um, if you still have a few more hot days, you can um, enjoy our outdoor pool. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, City Welcome. Attorney's Matters, Mr. Dahl. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to go now to Elected Officials Matters and start with our clerk, Clerk Kurt Patrick. I have nothing new tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll start then uh, move next to our counselors. Councilor Nossler back. Um, so we won't have a council meeting um, on the 29th. That's um, the fifth Monday. But Councilor Dozman and I are hosting um, a community conversation at Anderson um, Building uh, from 6 to... We're starting at 6. We're starting at 6, and we're going to about 7.30, um, but we'll be there until probably around 8 o'clock. Um, we're going to have a, a presentation from um, the 44th Avenue sub plan folks, and then also um, Lutheran will be there to, 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 to answer any questions. So um, hope people decide to still show up to that next Monday. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hutchinson. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Dozman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Council, Council Member Nossler Beck mentioned, we do have a District 4 community meeting next Monday, the 29th. Um, and speaking of Clancy's, they have their annual Celtic Festival coming up this Saturday starting at 10 a.m. So if you want to go in and enjoy that, it's always a great time. Um, and that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Stites. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, speaking of... Um district meetings. Ms. Weaver and I have ours coming up on September 17th. That's a dumpster one, so we'll have a dumpster. It'll be at Louise Turner Park. It uh, starts at uh, 9 a.m., I believe. It goes, uh, or the meeting will start at 9, and I believe we'll have the dumpster starting at about 8 o'clock. So um, it was it was standing room only last, last year, so hopefully it'll be as, as big this year. Uh, and other than that, support local businesses, and uh, if you can find it, find them by in Wheat Ridge. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Ohm. Thank you, Mayor. Just to remind everybody that applications for the Dr. Cog Civic Academy closes this Friday at 5 p.m. Thank you. Councilor Weaver. I just wanted to comment on all the cool stuff that we did tonight. That, thank you, staff, and it, that just, that was a bunch of really cool stuff. I also wanted to say something about the varmint uh, problem that we, we do seem to recurrently have in Wheat Ridge uh, because we have so much water coming through our community. Um, I had the opportunity to watch a, an incredible scene this morning at the farm, which was a giant hawk having breakfast um, of a varmint, um, a Wheat Ridge varmint. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, there are lots of ways to deal with varmints, not poison, because that does get into our water system and it does hurt our birds of prey. So just uh, it, contact me if you want to deal with varmints uh, without poisons. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hoppy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Porchlight Family Justice Center, I'm on the board of that. And it, it, what it is is a, a single place where we have over 20 partners throughout our community that are co-located in one place to help victims of violence domestic violence, elderly abuse, um, child abuse. And um, we also partner with another 70 partners within the community. It's a place where um, as a victim of violence, you can come, you only have to tell your story once. You don't have to be re-traumatized by telling your story to every place where you may need services. You'll have a navigator. A navigator will go and find the, re will listen to your story. They'll go find the resources and bring the resources into the room with you. Um, so, with that said, on Thursday night, the 25th, or on Thursday day, the 25th and all night, um, 240 Union is doing Dining for a Cause. And so if you would like to have lunch or dinner on Thursday, um, I would ask you to go to 240 Union because they will be donating um, a pretty large portion of their proceeds to 
um, Ports Light Family Justice Center that day. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, whole team. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've got a couple of things tonight. First of all, I just want to thank our speakers that, re, um, that accepted the proclamations tonight. I was really uh, moved by Ms. Lopez's story, and um, it's, it felt good to hear that we've come a long way. And, um, and we are a family uh, who, uh, through, unfortunately, have been touched by suicide. And uh, it's just so important that every day is Suicide Awareness Day. And it's good that we bring attention to it, but we should, we should practice it 365 days a year and not let people slip through gaps. Um, second thing, sorry to kind of bring this up, Patrick, uh, I'd like to try and warn you in advance of things, but um, I had to take the bus home today after dropping my car off. And um, the bus stops on the Wadsworth Project are terrifying. Um, I, I don't know if the city could take a look at putting up like Jersey barriers or something, but when you're standing on it, waiting for that bus stop next to the traffic that's trying to navigate lane changes and it's confusing and, um, and accessibility, especially at 44th and Wadsworth on the Northeast corner is not accessible. When I was, uh, I got dropped off and I was uh, making my way back to the corner to cross the street and I watched a, a older, older gentleman in a wheelchair trying to make his way to the bus stop and it was, it was pretty rough. The Northeast corner, yeah. So um, if, if we could take a look at those bus stops that are in the in the old right away right up against the cones if we could put up some sort of protection so that those pedestrians feel a little safer that would be great um and uh then i just uh want to mention since we're not meeting <laughs> again for a while uh on the 7th of september we're hosting september's deep dive club the topic is housing we're going to be meeting at new image brewing from seven to nine uh, we're actually calling it so housing going um, and we're really going to try and engage our, our community in a conversation about, you know, we're calling it what roof over whose head and where. Um, as we all know here that we've got some, um, you know, hard conversations, complicated conversations we're having. And um, it's just a more casual and more personal way to engage in that conversation. So we invite anyone who wants to have that conversation to meet us at New Image Brewing on September 7th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, I'll see you guys after that. And Patrick, have a really wonderful vacation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that brings us to the end of our meeting tonight. Thank you all who uh, joined us tonight. Thank you for the folks that came and spoke. We appreciate hearing from all of you. Um, we will be back in a regular meeting on September the 12th. So I hope everyone has a, has a, a good Labor Day weekend. Uh, school is in session, so we have lots of our children running uh, running hither and yon to school and to catch buses and to, uh, to play uh, before and after school. So please drive carefully and safely and slowly through our streets and be very careful. So uh, that, with that, we will uh, adjourn our meeting. Thank you. <laughs>